Hello everyone, I am Srimanthi and I am currently working as an ML engineer. Today we are going to discuss an awesome machine learning project that you can add to your resume. I am dedicated to teaching machine learning and ensuring that all of you get ML jobs as soon as possible. So this is basically developing a weather data prediction model where I will give you data and you will be able to clean the data, pre-process the data, analyze the data and decide on the best model for solving the problem. So let's get started straight away. So first we'll discuss about the data. So I'm working on Google Colab. So you can also work on Google Colab easily. You do not need a GPU for this and you will have to upload the CSV file. I'll also share the CSV file with you in the description. Okay, so here, as you can see, this is the weather data, which is a CSV file. Let's see. Yeah, so we have the date and we have the land average temperature. We have uncertainty of the average temperature of the land. We have max temperature of the land and the uncertainty surrounding that. So basically the variance, as we call it, minimum temperature, uncertainty surrounding that and land and ocean temperature and the uncertainty surrounding that. Right. So now what we are going to do is basically we are going to predict this land and ocean average temperature. And we are going to remove all the uncertainty columns because those are not needed here. Okay, so now that we have a good idea of the data, let's dive into the code straight away. First, definitely we are going to import pandas for processing the data. Now we will be showing the global temperature. Read CSV uh, weather data. Storing that in the global temperature variable. Okay, so now we are going to see the columns of the global temp data frame. Let's see the shape. Let's see the columns. These are things that you will need to add to any uh, data that you are dealing with so that you have a good idea of what you are working with here. So let's see columns. You remember this to do for every data set that you come across. Now we have the info and then we'll have, remember these functions, these are very important. And if the interviewer asks you, then this is like a very good way of impressing them as well. Let's see. So we have a shape, 3192 rows and nine columns. We have the index one that you can see right here. This is the data, uh, date time and then all the columns that we discussed. And this is our um, data frame. Okay, now that we have this, next thing is to basically process, pre-process the data and clean the data. So we'll pass in the data frame here. So it's always better to just have a copy with you just in case something goes wrong. Now, definitely we will, yeah, as the AI suggests, we'll definitely drop the not applicable columns, but first we need to do something else. We're going to drop all the uncertainty columns because those are not really important for our use case. So DF, so df dot drop, let's see, columns equal to, we have all these columns right here, uh, uncertainty columns, all the uncertainty columns we are going to drop. Okay, um, so basically we have dropped all the uncertainty columns. Next thing is to, okay, so next thing is to basically, as you remember, we saw a date time column, right? So we are going to convert the, date time column to pd dot date time because otherwise it becomes very difficult for the um like for us to process the data okay so now let's do the next thing which is to convert all the month let's have the month here df dot month as df dt dt dot month so that we have a better understanding of what we are dealing with here because having a single date time column will not help actually much. So remember these small tricks, this can actually improve your efficiency by a huge percentage. Okay, so df dot drop. We are not going to have the dt. X is equal one. I think I missed one thing, columns equal to. Yeah, so we are going to drop the dt column. We are going to keep the month and year column. 
one more thing that we can do here is that we can drop the month column as well but i'm going to just keep it just in case and we are going to drop all the duplicates so let's drop all the duplicate as you can see right here df equal to df dot na dot drop na which means removing all the uh, duplicate columns basically so now we'll basically do uh df i mean we had that stored in global temp so global temp equal to clean data global temp so global temp equal to clean data global temp and now we are going to do global temp dot head first five columns okay so this is just a mistake as you can see there was an extra space here which was the mistake from my end okay so one more thing we can do is that the year column we can actually use as our index so let's do that df equal to df dot set index let's have year as our index yeah so now we have set our index as year let's see how it looks like now okay so that was a mistake because um i redan it so that is why global temp already has removed all these columns so i had to run that again okay yeah I had, I had to run that again you understand right so remember this these things can like be you're running into errors and you're not able to understand so this is a good thing that you can take care of as you can see right here so one error was this extra space thing and the other one was basically i already done this so we had already dropped the columns so that is why again when i run this it could not find the columns anymore so that is why you have to run it again from the start this is a very common error that we run across great now that we have this I think month is just uh, in a number, so we can also drop the month. df equal to df dot drop. I'm in favor of dropping month actually. X is equal to one. Okay, then again I'll feel uh, getting the error, so we have to run from the start. Yeah. As you get better, as you solve more problems, these errors would be nothing. Okay, great. Now that we have the data here, so we have a good understanding of the data. And now we are going to plot the data to see how it looks like. We are going to use Seaborn, which is a very common and very actually good library for plotting data. We also have Plotly and we also have Matplotlib. So we'll use Matplotlib as well. Pyplot is PLT. And now the next we'll have a correlation matrix as global temp dot core and next thing we'll have is uh, sns dot heat map correlation matrix comma and not equal to true so we want the annotations to be there and we're not going to do plt dot show to show the plot let's see If you're facing some problem with Seaborn, so do install, do pip install Seaborn, do pip install matplotlib. Though I think Google Colab already has these, but if you're doing it in your local, then do remember to download all this, do the installation of these. So as you can see right here, so these all these features are pretty correlated. So even if we had used only one out of these three features, then probably we would have ended up with the same accuracy. But for this sake, we are going to just use all the three features for now. Now let's have our target and our input variable separated. Okay. So target is, I think you already know, I already mentioned this land and ocean average temperature. So land and ocean average temperature. I think you understand this. So I'm going to skip over this part. So Y is global temperature target and X is all these columns that we have remaining. This is our input and this is our output. Cool. Now we have X and Y. Now we are going to import train test split and then split the data into training data and test. So there we have here model selection train test split imported. Remember, this is very important. You will come across this in most of the like Python projects that you use or you work on. Just to speed up the process, I am um, I have like fast forwarded the video. So this is a training data, validation data, Y training data, Y validation data, train test split. I have split it across like 25% of the data set is test data. Now we have the shape of all three. We're going to print that. Let's see. So we have 
uh, around 1500 problems in the X training data and Y training data has to be saved. And the text, test data has around 500 problems. So we are going to have a baseline matrix with which we are going to compare our data, our final accuracy. So we are going to use the mean squared error for this. So basically the mean squared error would be the average of the Y training data as our test data. So let's have Y prediction equal to, um, we are going to have Y train dot mean, Y train dot mean into um, length of Y train. This is going to be our Y bread. And then we are going to basically print the mean squared error of Y train and Y bread. Basically this is, let's give an, a name for this baseline MAE along which with which we'll be comparing our data. So it's going to be, yeah, mean squared error of um, mean squared error of y train y pred. Um, that's it. Yeah. Let's see what it comes out to be. Yeah. So we basically have the mean squared error to be 1.633. We want our final uh, data that we have to be better than this. Sounds good. Now we are going to do is basically import all the libraries from the scikit-learn so that we are able to use the random forest. So we are going to use random forest as our model. As you can see right here, I've imported all this. So we, from the feature selection, we have select K best, K best features basically, but this is just a like formality. We'll use all the features, uh, but you can test with different features that you want. You could have taken only one feature and test out the accuracy as well, because we saw the features are highly correlated. So we can just take one of them. So from the ensemble, we're taking this one since this is an ensemble model. Uh, you remember we had taught, I had taught you the decision trees um, in detail. So random forest is basically an ensemble of decision trees. I'll, I'll discuss more. So this is pipeline is going to be where importing, getting the make pipeline function and pre-processing is the standard scalar one where we convert the data so that it has zero mean and unit variance. Okay, so these are very important functions. If you remember them, this should be bread and butter for you. Okay, so now we have the forest, which is make pipeline. We are going to make a pipeline. This is very important. Whenever you are doing any kind of model, you will have certain things that you want to do first, like pre-processing, like cleaning of the data and something and all of those. So basically always try to make pipelines so that you can use standard library functions. For example, here we are going to use select KBase. We're using all the features. So you can also try with one as well. Standard scalar is basically, uh, as I said, um, having um, zero mean and unit variance. And the random forest regressor, let's go into this in a little bit more detail. So it's going to use 100 decision trees in its um, in its black box. So we can say that this is a black box model since we don't really know what goes on inside. We just know it takes in a lot of decision trees and the input data and then outputs a much better model and much better output than it would have given with a single decision tree. So we are giving in 100 decision trees for this. The For each tree, the maximum depth is 50. As you can see right here, this is an example of a decision tree and this is the depth that I'm talking about. You can learn more about the video where I've talked about decision trees in great detail. Uh, random state is 77. So this is basically a seed for reproducibility. And then jobs is minus one so that if you have a CPU with many cores or a GPU with many cores, then it, it can use all of the cores. So now we are going to do forest.fit. Now we are going to do uh, the test data. Now you're going to predict the test data and see whether it's better than eval, like this one, MAE, whatever baseline we have or not. So let's see why prediction is basically forest.predict xval, which is our test data. Yeah. So let's see. So we have mean squared error as yval, ybred. Now we're going to see the, um, this is test MAE. So we are going to do test MAE equal to errors. Okay. So this is a test MA. Let's see what is our train MA. Let's copy this, paste it here, and let's see our let's keep it Y well only, and this would be X train. Now we're going to do is Y well and Y train. Uh sorry. We're going to do is Y pred predictive value and Y train. This is going to be train MA. Let's see. Yeah, so as you can see right here, we have the test MAE to be very low and the train MAE also very low. So this, see, this is the baseline one, 1.63. 
And this is the one that we have right here, which is our train MA, which is 0 0.0044, which means that our model is actually much better than the baseline model. So that's it for today. This is an awesome machine learning project that you can add to your resume. And I hope you understood it. I've explained everything line by line. If you like the video, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And definitely mention what problems you faced or any other projects you would like me to cover. There are many more on my bucket list and I'll be uploading them um, one by one. So yeah, that's it for today. Stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed this. Let's see for the next time. Oh, and I'll also link this notebook in the description. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.